a little action here. So for those that do not know what just happened today on why everyone's freaking out celebrating. So th today was the second AWC Tournament Cup, and we were in the lower bracket. So we were in the loser's bracket, and we ended up getting second place. So we made it all the way to the finals, and we ended up losing to Cloud9 4-1 in a series. But the reason why it was so crazy is because... We always lose to certain teams because they have very strong competitions and they're very good players and it's really hard for us to do anything about it. But to start it off, so we're playing versus Space Station Gaming. It's Gorecki, Thugonomics, Chun-Li, and Smexin. That's their team. They've notoriously been very difficult for us because they're, they're, they, we literally can never beat these people ever. We beat them once in two years. And we'll see what happens right now. Do they even give us a chance to win? In. How do you feel about this? Whisk K on his Destro Warlock. I mean, this is something that. What are they uh, saying about this? Did they like the Destro Lock pick? Did you did you guys expect the Destro Lock or no? Did anyone expect that we pull that out? Or no? Was that just totally like what the fuck? At BlizzCon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they were thinking the same thing, guys. I think they were thinking the same thing. Yo, Stacy, what's good? Had no clue. Golden, you're a legend, homie. Thank you, man. Not a single person thought of that. Yeah, honestly, neither did we either. So it surprised everyone, even us. So I think do we. How this first game go for us? See that you know they practice something and they're bringing it out here. Yeah, we practice that, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. strategy. Yeah. That's of course. That's what it is. If, All right, um, yeah. let's get in here. Coming in from Abster. Let's see if. So first game they're playing Paladin because okay I think so what they thought what we were gonna do was they thought we were gonna play RPS so they already know Windwalker Destro is super hard for RPS and he logs on a Paladin because they know that Paladin is a super hard counter to our comp as well because of the Shadow Resist Aura. Because Shadow Res Resist Aura is a 15% shadow damage reduction to every single player on their team. So it instantly nerfs my Shadow Priest damage completely, and it nerfs both of our Gushing Wounds damage. So it's like an insane ability. It's ridiculously good. So that's why they did this. We knew that they were, we were, they were probably going to try this, so... We tried the Destro Lock. Game plan? Uh, we don't know what's going on. We have no idea what's going on. Basically, we're like, okay, well, we're probably gonna sit in the middle of the map and just attack each other and just try to make sure I shut down the lock as much as possible is kind of the main thing. Because when, when you're playing a Destro Lock comp, winning really quick is not really realistic because a lot of it just comes down to, uh, eventually later in the game, you'll be able to just one-shot something. And also what we were afraid of too was, I forgot this even happened, this is so long ago, we realized, too, one of the weaknesses to playing Destro Lock is you could potentially get Spite Trinketed. So that's why you see anytime they try to do a go on Wiz, all three of them are throwing this purple goo on the ground to try to abuse the corruption, which is brutal. So to start the game off, always go for the early blind, get the trinket out of the way. And then a lot of it is kind of just waiting till we can maybe try to get cooldowns out and just a lot of Chaos Bolts and stuff like that mainly is what's going on, I'd say. It's kind of hard to talk about the Destro Lock games because a lot of it's just kind of, we're, boom, we're going in, we're attacking him. We get wall the way. I, I, I'm trying to think if there's like any like really interesting moments in this game. I'm trying to think about it. But a lot of it is just like, okay, I gotta sit on the Destro Lock and shut him down as much as possible, and eventually we should be able to kill somebody with this. I think is what's going on. You did so good, yo. Thank you, Gabe. I appreciate it, man. Thank you guys for all the congrats, the good jobs, man. It was seriously such an insane, insane day. But basically, I'm always, uh, I'm always trying to double, double out the DPS and basically just shut down the Warlock. And eventually, as time goes on, when damping starts ramping up, we can start doing stuff here. Going Pally seems not really worth it ever. So I, I was like, okay, that was kind of a mistake. I thought we could maybe kill him there. Rich, what's good, man? What's good, dude? Let's see. Once things kind of start picking up in the game, maybe, maybe I can uh, skim through it because it's kind of awkward. Like, there's not much going on a lot of the time here. I think once we're <clears throat> getting towards the end of this game here, what is this, the next, like, 40 seconds? All right, let's see. So this game's pretty short. This is a three-minute game. Okay, generally games go, like, 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, so this is, like, this is a pretty short game right now. What's going on? I'm pretty sure we just full sent all of our damage here, and I think it was actually kind of lucky he died here. So there's a sack from the Paladin. And we had the kidney, I think it was weeks. Was it my morning? Weeks should I? So I thought we were gonna probably die here, because I'm pretty sure in this moment here, my whole team was saying that we're, we're dead, we're dead, we're dead. But then we had the double coil here, and I think we literally turned this around on them like super fast. Hey, Gorecki also under fire right now. Absurge responds with his ascendance to keep this guy alive. Both teams having to exchange a lot. Oh yeah, we see it. so we see us score, we get a lock on Gore, which is huge on his wings. And then it's in nice this moment here, we just full send and try to kill him here. Right, just die. Nicely done here by the Golden Guardians. And then he bops him, but I guess we literally just killed this guy because he kicked him. So that's the thing with Destro Lock. With Destro Lock, it's kind of just like, okay, we're like sitting here, we're waiting, and eventually Chaos Bolts land, and people just fall over. So this, this was insane because for our first game of the day, we won, which was crazy, which was crazy. All right, guys, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So basically, uh, once we lost that first game, this is when we decided as a team, like, okay, we're playing pretty awkwardly we're playing pretty scared and we needed to just play like we're just playing on ladder and running in and trying to do as much damage as possible 
So that's why this matchup becomes really, really awkward. Because it seems like the only way I can reliably do a lot of stuff is if I'm killing every single person on the team. So generally what I'm trying to do throughout the game is I'm trying to dot all three targets consistently. Because without the, uh, oh my god, this, this game was like 14 minutes long. Holy shit. This game had a pretty crazy ending, I think, unless I'm wrong. Okay, so let's see. We're like, getting close here. We're at about 40% dampening. This is where the game really starts kind of picking up for us. Because Gore's going oom, um, war winning on mana, and they're all kind of rotting here at this point. So basically anything I'm doing, I'm trying to make sure I lock Greki down so we can't heal any of these people. And then Wiz and Carl are rotting the DPS while I'm also killing Gore back here. Man, it's weird because when I played for CD's team, there's a much more things to explain about kind of what's going on and what we were thinking here. But I guess I can't really remember a lot of it because it was so long ago. That's the team I know, baby! We had a great day out of it. It was insane, man. Basically a lot of this came down to figuring out like, okay, who are we going to attack? Who are we going to focus on? Who are we going to Chaos Bolt? Because... It always seems like going on the healer is the best possible scenario, but it's really hard to do that because of the way they position and run away. And then anytime they ever would stack or anything, it's always going to just try to triple dot, like any, anything at all. And it's very scary when I have to use my cloak and evasion because that's my best defensive cooldowns. And without those, it's it's pretty brutal. So we decide once they both get away here, we want to go on the Warlock with a Kidney Bomb. I think he reflects this bolt, which sucks. Oh yeah, this, okay, I remember this game. This, this game, I had a nice vanish at the end when I decided like, you know what, I'm running in right now, I'm killing them all. Or is it, so I, we're basically just waiting here. I'm going for a resalt right now because there's nothing else I can do. Yep, try to get any stun on Chenley just to slow him down. There comes the Quills. This is really bad if he gets bolts here. It's very scary. I don't know if we kicked him or not. I don't think I kicked him. Maybe I did. I'm not sure. Finally, force that cocoon. I think this bolt might hit. This is Hi. You want to make sure you always dress got too outside of the stun so they don't get that conflict major buff. But as they're all this low, we see that Gore has no wall. And I think we try to start triple dotting. Oh yeah, Gore runs in trust right here. It's always very scary if you get legs up like that because you can die very quick to anything here. So I decide here that uh, I'm running in. I'm literally in here right now. Okay, so this is sick here. This is an important moment. So what happens here is they all start retreating to the pillar. Like Thug and Gore run behind the pillar. And then Shun is out here still killing my Warlock over here. And this is actually kind of lucky because what happened here is I bring them both back here. Right after this, they both walk back. We look at Chun back here. Chun's still a very viable kill target because he has no trinket and no karma, which are his best defensive cooldowns. So once they're both behind the pillar, I have my kidney shot available. I, I sprint around and I step kidney Chun right as Wiz is casting the Chaos Bolt, and we just do a ton of damage to him right here. And I think this is where I decide right after this. Once I thought we were going to kill him with this kidney. I thought this was over for sure right here. But looks like it was not over indeed. He lives at literally 0 HP because of a Tauti Conduit. And then once Gore runs in, I put dots on him because Chun ports back. And this is where I decide, you know what? I'm going in. It's 3v1. I've got no trinket, cloak, or evasion or anything. And I'm going to send it right now. I'm going in there. So my whole team is back here. I'm here alone. I got coiled. I think we get a... Nope, coil still. I'm trying to... Can I use my tank trinket? Tank trinket is my last defensive cooldown as well. And now I have the vantage available. So seeing that they're oom, they're all at you know, less than 50% HP... I've got to do as much damage as possible. I'm not sure which target I picked to kill. I feel like it's going to be the Warlock that dies here. Yeah, and I see. So he rings me. And, so he fears me and ring of pieces me. And the ring actually break Or the fear actually breaks mid-ring. So I'm able to vanish here. I'm pretty sure I grow the Destro Lock. I kick Gore from stealth. And then I stun Chun Li. Yeah, so I grow the Lock. I kick Gore from stealth so he can't see the cast. And then I stun the Fist of Fear from Chun. And then we kill the Warlock because the Infernal Stun comes in right after that as well. And then since Gore has no cooldowns available, we basically just run in and murk him in this kidney, I think. And he dies. Right? Yeah. Thank God. So that was good. If that all didn't work that well, we uh, we were kind of in a scary spot that game. Because the Destro games are really hard to actually tell what's going on and, and what's happening. Because it feels like you can just die really easily at any moment. So basically in the last game, they switched their comp and they picked this really weird map. I'm not sure why they picked Blade's Edge. But apparently, Double Monk Warrior is like the hardest counter in the entire game to any uh to any destro lock because they literally just run in and, and destroy you completely and it, it's like it's like unhealable damage to a to a certain degree so here basically we like we decided that we're gonna play on the ground because we keep getting ring of peace off because two monks means two ring of peace and especially with the bridge this is a destro lock can't move if you get knocked off it's like okay i can't get back up it's gonna take me a year to do it so and this is honestly very scary i feel like we're losing a majority of this game until we decided that we need to mainly focus on going on gareki because killing the monk and the warrior was not really doing much for us uh, because they're just a lot tankier than going on the healer. Like I said, always go. Anytime you find a misweaver, it just seems like you have to try to kill the misweaver, whatever you can do. So I think we called for like a, a, a strategy switch, like kind of midway through the game, because we realized that we're probably gonna lose on mana like this and cooldowns, and it wasn't going that well for us. Where is this? This ending was really solid here. This is a really good game for us at the end. But basically, I'm just sitting here trying to solo gore most of the time here as well, and. Uh, 
anytime I can, it's always good to try to put dots on the DPS because it just helps block people. But basically, the, the longer I'm on Gore, the less he can heal his teammates, which is kind of the main thing. So here we almost died. This is really close here. Barely got that link off. Thank goodness. Would have been L season if we didn't get the link there, I think. Let's see here. I think this game's going to end in like the next minute or so, so we'll see. This is so crazy how this guy died here. I can't believe that everything got lucky. So we decided... Uh, so I'm pretty sure I called right here that, you know what, dude? We have to kill Gore. We have no choice at this point. We need to lock in right now. Because once you're this late in the dampening, if you spend time hitting the wrong targets and you're mostly going to die... Well, not necessarily damping, but like we have no cooldowns for Uman mana and they do a lot more damage than us. So basically we decide like, yo, we got to go on Gore. Got to go on Gore. So this is a really sick Kenny here. Great opportunity for us. I thought he was going to die in this, but uh, looks like he got lucky and lived there with the uh, the Ore Mastery out of that. Coiled on the Ore Mastery again. Insane. He's still being shut down, which is crazy. I think he gets away here and then I just start dying the DPS. This is when I realized like, okay, they're really scared here because they're panicking because Spexen's off my Destro Lock and on me trying to storm up and peel me. So this is good for us. This is why I know, like, oh shit, okay, we're actually in a good spot here. This is not bad. So then, like I said, we gotta push in. We have to keep on to Gore. Even though Gore kind of got away there, we really have no other kill target. It's not like Smexon or Chun-Li's gonna die here. So even though I'm running at this guy like a moron, and my Deathstroke is getting 2v1 over here, and my, like, this looks terrible for us right now. But I have to run at Gore because there's no other way we can kill anything. So I decide to kill him, start putting dots on him. I'm trying to dot all three, and then, oh my god, holy shit. Dude, so right here, Wiz is like, oh my god, I'm gonna gate, I'm gonna gate, I'm gonna gate. He gates the wrong way. He thought his gate oh fuck. He thought his gateway was going the other direction. So he literally gates. Carl's over here and w watch Wiz when he gates. Look at this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. We see that? It's like, no. No, it's over. This guy is feared in Beijing and Wiz just gated across the map into the 3-1 situation. And was like, oh no! He's like he's like, oh no, I gated the wrong way, I gated the wrong way, and then it was like, okay. So I was like, okay, this is really bad now. We just had a really good chance to win. And now I don't know what the hell is going to happen because look at his cooldowns. No wall, no coil, no infernal, no deem soul, nothing. And what do I have? Nothing. What does Carl have? Nothing. Oh my god, so Wiz, look at this, look at this. There's three people gunning him down and he's back here. And Carl's across the bridge right now. So let's see, he walks back up. And then Carl was like sprinting in trying to vitality conduit voodoo toe to him. And he got legs with it. And he got legs up on top of it. So I was like, okay, fuck it. I'm a smoke bomb. Maybe it stops something. Maybe I don't know. I pressed every button I had. All I had left was smoke bomb at this point. So I pressed it. We're barely alive to that Vitality Condor at Voodoo Totem. And now we realize, yo, we got to turn this shit around. Okay, this is a very important moment here, okay? You get, you generally you get one chance to not fuck this up, okay? So we already gated in. We're on the verge of dying. We're probably going to live for like 20 more seconds or so before we die. So out of the three targets here... We need to pick the right kill target because if we pick Chun and put all this 20 seconds of pressure into him and he lives, we instantly lose the game. If we put it into Smexin and he lives, we instantly lose the game. Or if we put it into Gore and he lives, we instantly lose the game. So logically, our best option here, since we couldn't kill the DPS earlier, we call to go on Gore here. Because generally, there's a lot of times where we have this situation and we make the wrong call because it's very hard to know what's the right moment to do at this time. And then we see... We decided, you know what? We got to focus on Gore. We're on Gore. He's low. He cocoons himself. I actually kicked him in the cocoon, which is good for us. And now we're watching for the coil. Watch for the coil and the infernal cooldown from Wiz here. This is why this kill was so insane. So basically, we're still triple dotting them all. But now that Gore has no cocoon, no trinket, and no ring of peace, we need to figure out how we're going to kill this guy as soon as possible. So I got the full kidney right here. Okay. Wiz is still being trained. I got a single-handed Dress the Goth flame right here. And he split from his teammates. So I got full value. And Gore's not playing Conflict Major. So he's already at like 40%. Trinket's up in 10 seconds. He's got no cocoon. He had wall available. So then watch this. Wiz comes in and coils him. Coil comes off cooldown at the best possible moment in the world. And he got a double coil off that. So it's kidney to coil. Meanwhile, if Greki gets a single global, he can press his wall, which is a huge damage reduction. It's basically impossible to kill anyone through it. So he gets the coil. And then off the coil, the infernal stun comes in right before he gets swept. So the Infernal chains the stun perfectly right off the coil. And then after that, Wiz casts a triple Shadow Fury after the triple Infernal stun. So we were able to get a Kidney, a Dress Flame solo, and the coil comes in into the Infernal, and he triple the R Shadow Fury. And the Gore presses wall and he dies there. That's how close that was. That's how the, in, the fact that the timing worked out for us there was unbelievable because that shit never happens ever we always lose in that situation because literally the stars have to align 
in order to get CC'd for that long to kill him here. And oh, also, look, look, another thing too. Look how close this was. Look how close this was. Watch again. Watch again. Can you see? Can you see it? I'll show you in a second here. Watch my camera. Watch my camera. Look at Smexin. Look at his cooldowns. Look at Gore's HP. Gore's at less than 10% in the Infernal Sun. And the triple throw strategy. Look at Smexin's rally and cry right here. One second on it, and he has Trinket. So if he Trinket rallies this guy, there's no way he's dying. Look how close that shit was. And then Gore dies. He Trinketed trying to get the rally, and he couldn't get it. This had zero seconds left on it, and it would have saved him. And then he rallies after he dies. That's how close it was. All in the span of like one second that could have uh, saved him. <laughs> so that's got to be a, a, a tilter loss to say the least. So we do indeed win those. We do indeed win those. So yeah, all of the damage came through for our Warlock composition there. And then the fact that they didn't have the uh, the Rallying Cry also was huge for us, which was major. So uh, do you guys want to see any other games? First game of the day. We played Destralock Rogue Shaman, the RLS composition right there. So we're playing a Rogue Lock Mirror, kind of. I don't know if we're advantage or not, but this was our first game playing Rogue Lock ever. So I was very, we were, we were honestly pretty unsure of how this was going to go. IDD, what's good, man? Thank you, Obi. So basically, we were playing pretty passive, pretty worried about what was going on because we just really didn't know how the matchup was going to go or how it felt. So basically, this is really bad. So Carl Trinket at the first blind of the game from the Rogue, and the Paladin finally gates in, presses Hodge on my Shaman. And this is brutal because at this point, he gets blinded off the Hodge by the Paladin. And now, so he's Hodge blinded here. And then Wiz is at full HP. And they're about to just full send all their damage and kill us right now. And Wiz got full CS here. So what happens here since he got full CS, it meant that he can't wall. So he gets to like super, super low HP here because I don't care for bolts. So he's at like half HP and he still hasn't been able to wall. Boom, the Infernal Bolt hits and Carl's full sapped. But this is terrible. So Carl's full sapped. I'm stunned. I'm like, well, dude, I can't help you, man, because he has no wall. He's already this low because he got corroded now. I think he chooses the Hellstone, but right now we're already like 30% is when we press wall, which is why it's um why it's kind of a bad spot for us to be in because once we wall this late, we're most likely going to die, especially when the Rogue can just easily do sap off this. Yeah, sap, and then boom, the lock's popped, and I can't do anything. I'm like, well, I can't peel anything. We're going to die. And then we get CC'd forever. So this first game sucked for the Rogue Lock. And then after this game, we're like, okay. If we're going to sit here and play Rogue Lock, we don't need to sit here and play scared or be afraid. We should literally just run in and decimate these people. So the next game, we decide, you know what? I'm fucking running in. I'm going to triple kill these people. I'm literally going to destroy them. I'm going to slaughter them. Game starts here. I instantly run in. I get a sap on the pally, which is rare. And I'm instantly opening on the Warlock. This is a really great start for us so far. Got Fear Effect. Instantly got the spell. I don't know if I go for early blind here. I feel like I might. Do I early blind here? Maybe not. Maybe I wait a bit. If I I blind like right now, I swear I do. Right here comes like right now, probably after the bolt hits. There it is, full blind, and he's playing relentless, so it sits. And now I just got the lock here, and I'm instantly like, okay, you know what? I'm going in here. Advanced, it's an easy sap there, growth the lock, and my blind actually broke to my infernal, which sucks. So that's a little unfortunate here. But basically, our game plan changed. Where I'm just gonna try to do as much damage as possible and be as aggressive as possible on these people because I feel like once we run on top of them and get in their face, that they're not gonna know what to do, and we we're able to just like really pull ahead in this game. So. Like, damage-wise, we're, like, crushing these people here. Like, they're they're under so much pressure. Like, I feel like the whole game... I feel like this game ended pretty quick, too. Yeah, this game ends in, like, less than two minutes here. So, let's see. Get a full hex. Anytime we get a full hex, it's like they're getting triple killed. Look at their HP right now. These guys are getting destroyed from last game. Like, literally, we're all on top of them, running in, trying to win as fast as possible. Because realize it's a lot better option to do. I see swap the core here. This is a crazy game, too. This is a huge game for us, because this was a big momentum swinger. So... I've got big dots on the power, you got big dots on the lock here. So you get blinded and then we trigger this as well. But right now, if we look at their HP, they're also rotting. They're all like 50%, 60% or so, so we're in like a pretty good spot to win right now. I believe when he sacks the Warlock is when we decide that we want to kill the Pally as well. I think that's coming soon though. It's coming a little bit here. Yep, I got dots on the Pally now, so this is when I... Since they're stacked like this, this is when I instantly go for the double dots here. And... I believe we start doing some stuff soon here. I got Kitty, this is a terrible Kitty because I take no damage and we, we instantly start pulling head off this. Peekaboo responds with his own kidney shot. I mean, the rogues are just going after okay. each other. Whatever he wants to press sack is when we start to kill him. From the Charlotte Phoenix should be coming here shortly. So once again, we're pretty far, we're pretty far ahead on pressure here, and they're they're still dying like this. He finally wings here. I still dot the pie again here. There's the kitty shot. I don't know if he sacks him here or not. We got we so we first of all we start with the wind shear, which is good, into a hex. I believe he sacks him off this right. He's got a sack in here. But here's the double mortal coil. Blind off the hex too, which is good. I don't know if I sapped that or not. No, I didn't even I didn't even trigger that because I realized he's already dying anyway, so it's still good. It's hard to remember a lot of these games because I feel like they happened so long ago. Despite that, they are still pushing forward. Plus, when you're playing Death Rogue, all we're trying to do is literally just, just do as much damage as possible. Make sure we keep pressure on the rogue so we can't run and make sure the warlock can't just kill the bolts. So this is where it's big here. 
but they're struck the pally is it 50 percent? the locks at 30 percent? we have dots rolling on all three of them this is a super important moment here there he sacks the warlock and then wiz instantly locks him on this fast cast so then the whole team starts screaming oh my god we locked him full we need to kill him right now and no one actually specified what the kill target was so i instantly went to the paladin because that's what i was thinking and luckily that looks like that was the right choice because since we kicked this guy we could have chose to try to kill the warlock but i knew the warlock had wall so if i run to the paladin that's locked out there's a chance he dodges that bubble and he gets murked instantly so yeah thank goodness Wiz had the cs there because without that cs that would have been a brutal one to say the least basically the last game here on tolberon this game got really close towards the end here everyone's literally completely tapped here the paladin has no cooldowns as well everyone's at 50 percent we're at 50 percent we have no buttons as well a lot of these games kind of went like this and then the first time I decided to do this in the game here was when we actually won the game. Let me see. I'll show you guys right about here, here. 208. Okay, so right here, at this point, they we're all completely tapped. We have virtually no cooldowns remaining. Everyone is really low. Everyone's tapped on cooldowns. The Paladin has wings up here. It's really scary. Every time the Warlock, you just cast bolts like this. So actually, sometimes I'll triple the Arcane to stop the bolts because it's more important than letting the bolt go off. So then, once I'm in this situation here, when I'm looking at the Warlock, I realize, okay, there's going to be an opportunity here where if I can step kick the Paladin, it's going to instantly win us the game. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's very scary to do that because if you do decide to step away and try to send that, yo, they give the $10, Evo. We got second place this tournament, man, so it's all over. The next tournament starts on Wednesday is what it is. So we got second place, which is about as good as it gets. And then, um, so yeah, right here I decide, I look at the Paladin, I'm like, okay, I know if I step kick this guy, he's going to die here. So I go for the first one. The first time I do it the entire game, here it is right here. Boom, he cast it, step kicked him. The Warlock has nothing left at this point, and it stopped his big wings heal. So the fact that we landed this is amazing. And then he instantly dies because of that. And that is what we like to see right there. So yeah, basically we won that last game with a step kick. That was like kind of the, the highlight of that game, I th I'd say. And then this Robodome game was also kind of kind of cheesy as well. And this Robodome game, a lot of it came down to uh, basically there was a point where neither of us rogues had any defensive cooldowns. We kind of just trained each other because we were all playing a lot of gushing wounds, so our versatility was low. So it was a better choice to go on the rogue here, especially when we realized that they were kind of panicking and, and really nervous about all the damage going in. And when they realized they were losing, it really showed in like their gameplay and stuff, especially like interrupts wise and damage wise. But uh, did anything happen here? This game, we see. Let's see. I guess this one ends soon. So I almost died here. Look how close this was here. I didn't want to use my trigger here. I wanted to save everything for the kill, but I had to use my cloak there, so that was a little awkward. But I think the way this rogue died too was also sick because we had a sick chain on him. That last fight with Cena was insane. Yeah, that was a good that was a good fight with C9, man. That was good. What was this? Yeah, so Wiz just bolting whatever he can here. I wanted to go rogue. I'm still killing or calling to go rogue here. It sucks when we cap stun too, because I can't Kenny, but that's pretty crazy because it actually started with a cap stun. We cap stun to infernal stun to Kenny shot on the rogue, and he dies here without being able to press anything out of that. And I don't think the paladin realizes he's gonna die there either. So that was a nice chain. That was a nice chain. If anything else, in the games were C9, uh, the game that we won was I'll show you guys that one. I'll show you guys like kind of the last second here. I'm honestly pretty tired, so I can't even remember a lot of these games. But the highlight of this game for me was when we're triple killing him on this map here. We got a lot of pressure all around. The goal always is make sure you can get as many dots out as possible. That's the goal. And what happens here is we go on to Cubsy here. And then in this situation right here, I realize I have no trinket, but I have evasion available. We don't know who has leg sleep because we're trying to track two of them at the same time. So I just assume that I should use my evasion here because I'm probably not going to die. And if I dodge leg sleep, we're most likely going to win the game right here, right now, because he has no trinket and no cocoon since so he just used it on the Warlock. So I press my evasion right here. And I dodged the leg sweep from Cubsy right here. So Carl got stunned. I dodged it with evasion. I'm still on Cubsy. He's very, very low. He's got virtually no buttons left. And then he tries to ring a piece here. And what I do is I step kick into the ring a piece here. Because I don't know if he realized that I dodged the, the stun with evasion that fast. So I got the full lockout there. And with this, we were able to actually kill him in that lockout. Is where it died. So that was a very satisfying situation there. But I also thought for C9, like, I think we can beat them. I think we just have to play really well. But... We were really tired at the end of the day, but overall, it was a very, very amazing day of games. So yeah, that's kind of a little bit of breakdown of what happened and how kind of the games went and what was going on there.